Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Fontana, California for the Auto Club 400. The track is a two-mile D-shaped oval with just 14 degrees of banking, has multiple lanes for drivers to run, and has led to some exciting racing over the last couple of years as the track has worn in since its last repave. This week here at Auto Club Speedway will be a little bit different than those before. Um, because of the 2019 rules package, teams will be once again going back to the full package like we've seen at Vegas with the tapered spacer, reducing the horsepower to 550 horsepower, higher spoiler, and the air ducts that we also seen. Uh, it's going to create some more downforce. So this low downforce package should once again create some drafting opportunities, and we saw this in qualifying yesterday. Like Vegas, drivers once again waited until the very last second to go out on the pit road to get their laps in. Um, because obviously the first car, or sorry, the second car is going to have an advantage over the first car, third over the second, fourth over the third, and so on. And the, the driver that's last in that line of the draft um, during that qualifying is definitely going to have the advantage and the fastest speed. So no one really wanted to get out there and go first. This maybe went a little bit too far in the final round for some for teams as they kind of all waited around until after that 47 second time limit, which was kind of their their go-to one to get out on the track. None of those 12 drivers in that final round recorded a time. So qualifying will now go back to the second round um, of that qualifying to the top time. So Austin Dillon did get the pole here this week because of that. Um, this is probably going to spark some changes from NASCAR to kind of eliminate this because, I mean, when you've got 10 minutes of qualifying in that round or 7 to 10 minutes in that round and no one goes out, the fans who paid money to sit in those seats didn't pay money to sit there and watch cars on pit road um, go out with 47 seconds left. So we could see some changes coming for Texas. Not going to be a big deal for Martinsville, but for Texas, I think we may see more of the same if they don't make any changes. But uh, we'll have to wait and see what NASCAR announces in the coming weeks. So back to this week. Um, like I said, with the two-mile track, we're going to be looking at uh, some dominators. We've had some dominators. We'll go look at the sheet here real quick. And over the last six races here at Fontana, um, I like to go down here at the bottom and I record how many drivers led 100 plus laps. So each driver in the last two races here, you got Martin Trex Jr. one from the pole last year, led 125 laps. Kyle Larson led 110 laps the year before and one from the pole. Um, so track position, very important here. And as you can see, um, looking at the bottom here, one driver has led 100 or more laps in five of the last six races. And you can find that in the last six races at Fontana tab here at the bottom. Got every driver, DraftKings, and FanDuel score in there as well if you want to check that out for your research. So it is good. Um, drivers have talked that passing has been a little bit harder earlier in the year with this new package. So the driver that does get out front does have a little bit of an advantage because it is very tough to pass um, that driver. Kyle Busch eventually did do it over Ryan Blaney last week at ISM. A little bit different package, but same thing. Um, with that high rear spoiler, you can get close to the cars, but they make it, you know, hard to pass. So I think we do see, kind of like last year, I think we are, you know, we, I think we do see multiple drivers lead 50 plus, probably see three drivers lead 50 plus, maybe even two drivers in that 80, 90 plus two dominators this week. You could see one get out and lead the first stage, one get out and lead the second stage or most of the third stage. So um, I think we'll see multiple leaders probably in the 5 to 10 different leaders range, but I think there will be two or three drivers that uh, lead a ton this week. So let's jump into some of my top picks here. I'm only going to discuss the guys in green. Those are going to be 
Um, those are going to be my core drivers. Blue are going to be GPP and yellow are going to be value. Um, so we're going to talk about the core drivers and value drivers here this week and why I like them. And just to note, this video is being recorded before final practice. It starts in about an hour here. So we've got first practice qualifying and practice two data uh, in the model right now. So we're only going to be looking at that. So it'll be, be very important to pay attention to that final practice speeds later this afternoon. With that, uh, my top driver in right now is Kyle Busch. He's the most expensive on both sides. He's number one in my overall model right now. He qualified fourth. He showed top three speed in practice two in both one lap and ten lap averages. He's been really good here. We'll go look at his details. So he's finished top ten here in six of his last seven races, including back-to-back -back wins in 2013 and 2014. This is also the place where Kyle Busch got his first pole and first win. Uh, back in, I believe it was 2005. I have to go back and look at that, but uh, the exact year. So I really like him. I think he has a good chance starting for the getting up front nice and early, leading some laps. I think he can be definitely one of those dominator drivers this week. Next up, I like Brad Kozlowski, kind of skipping over Kevin Harvick here. He's starting near the front. He was fastest in P2. Um, I'd like to see his 10 lap averages when it comes to that final practice. He hasn't been that great here, so I leave him as a GPP only this week, and I'll skip over and go to Brad Kozlowski. He's starting 13th this week. Um, he was third in practice, too, and fastest 10 lap average, fastest 15 lap average as well out there in that practice. So he's showing a ton of speed, gives us some place differential upside there, and he's been red hot to start the year, him and Team Penske. Um, with Joey Logano. They both got wins. I talked about them a little bit uh, earlier in the week as well in the chats. Kyle Larson, leaving him to GPP at this moment. Um, he's been really good here. Like I said, he dominated the race two years ago, leading 110 laps. This is a track where drivers have talked about, uh, you know, running closer to the middle or to the top. Well, that's right up Kyle Larson's alley. Um, the only thing that concerns me this week is he's uh, qualified 15th. Showed, you know, he got uh, into the wall a little bit in that practice too, so his practice speeds may be a little bit skewed there, so that's something to pay attention to in that final practice as well with Kyle Larson, just to make sure that we see some top 10 speeds out of him uh, before jumping uh, fully on him at 10.8 on DraftKings, 12.4 on FanDuel. One driver, probably going to be the most chalky driver of the week, Martin Trex Jr. Um, as you can see, he comes at a bit of a discount here, especially on DraftKings at 10000 as the sixth most expensive driver. Starts 27th. He missed out on getting to the second round of qualifying yesterday. Was fourth. He didn't run a 10 lap, 10 lap cycle in that practice two, but he was fourth in the one lap speed. So I think uh, no matter what, he's a lock for cash games uh, starting 27th this week. I think you can fade him a little bit in GPPs just because he's going to be uh, higher owned starting 27th because there is not a lot of drivers with fast cars that are starting back in the field this week outside the top 15. Kurt Busch is one of those. He's starting 21st. He hasn't been great here, so I label him as GPP only. Eric Almarola. I don't think he's got what it takes to be a dominator, so I'm listing him as GPP only starting third. Um, he did show a top five speed and 10 lap averages in that second practice. We'll definitely want to see what happens there in final practice with him as well, but he's going to be a better play on FanDuel just simply because he's not going to get those dominator points and those aren't nearly as important as finishing position over on FanDuel, so I think he's a great play there. Going down to the mid-range, uh, Eric Jones is, is firmly on my radar this week as a core play. Starting 18th, didn't qualify very well, but the qualifying's been a little tricky. We're going to find some fast cars that are starting outside the top 10 this week, and he is one of them. He was 13th in practice, too, 6th and 10 lap averages. So it looks like he's got a top 10 car here again this week. And if we go and look at his data here, you know, he's raced here twice. Started 14th in 2017 in the 77 car, finished 12th. And then he jumped into Joe Gibbs' car into this number 20 here last year. He started fourth, ended up finishing seventh. Very good for him in his first year with Joe Gibbs Racing. So I think he's got that top 10 car this week and starting 18th. He also gives you that place differential value. And he's going to be a core play at 8,200 on DraftKings, 9,800 on FanDuel, safe in all formats. We're we'll looking at Daniel Suarez in GPPs. Um, even as a punt play over on FanDuel at 7,300, you can see he's very cheap. He started in 20, then he showed top 15 speed in that practice too. Makes a lot of sense there as well as a nice pivot off of Eric Jones and GPP. The red guys I got here are some guys that I am fading. I don't like Austin Dillon starting from the pole. I don't think he can dominate. I don't even think he's got a top five car um, here this week. So definitely going to be fading him because I think he's going to fall back nice and early. 
Uh, Ryan Newman, I don't like him starting seventh. I don't think he's going to be a top ten car this week as well. So kind of the same reasons. And the same with Chris Buescher. He started a bit back at 14th. Um, he was 10th in those practices there. But I think he's no more than a 15th place car this week. He hasn't been great here in the past either. Um, probably a 15th, 20th place car. And I think we've got better values. And that starts with Alex Bowman. Starting 23rd this week, showed top 10 speed in practice too, top 5 speed in 10 lap averages. Really nice to see, and he's been actually pretty good here as well early on in his career. He raced here 2014 and 15 um, in two different cars, the number 23 and the number 7, finished 22nd and 33rd. Nothing special, but jumped into that 88 car last year and finished 13th after starting 28th. So a very similar situation as this week, and I think he can definitely get inside that top 15, and he's probably outside... Um, outside chance of getting a top 10 finish here this week. And if he does that, he's going to blow away his value at 7,000 on DK, 8,000 on FanDuel. His teammate, William Byron, just a little bit cheaper, um, quite a bit cheaper, $900 discount on FanDuel. He started in 22nd, and he showed 12th, 12th speed, uh, 12th overall rank speed in practice two. Didn't run a 10-lap cycle, so it'll be interesting to see just to get a final look at him in final practice before I make my decisions. Right now I'm leaning Bowman over Byron, but if Byron, if they both show some speed, uh, top 15, top 10 speed in final practice, they're both going to be on my radar, and I think stacking them together makes a lot of sense because we're going to see some drafting, see a lot of teammates uh, working together here this week at this two-mile track with uh, the downforce package that we have. Daniel Hamrick stands out as well. Um, unlike Austin Dillon, he didn't, his teammate Austin Dillon, he didn't qualify near the front, so he started in 17th. This is his first time in a cup car here at this track, but he showed top five speed. He showed a ton of speed in that practice too, so I think he could maybe hook up with the Chevys as well. And if he even finishes top 10, even if he finishes top 15 at his price, it makes a lot of sense as a Stars and Scrubs play down here at the bottom. Um, I don't think I would load up on him being as it's the first race of this track i don't think i'll be using him in cash games but for gpps it makes a lot of sense if you're trying to fit two of the top tier guys in going even lower i like michael mcdowell this week 5800 on DraftKings, 4500 on fanduel he started in 29th um showed 15th place speed in practice two no 10 lap cycle so it'll be again another guy i would really like to see what happens in final practice here but starting 29th, if he's got a top 20 car, even top 25 car at his price, it's going to make a lot of sense. Um, so if, you know, you could definitely pair Hemrick and McDowell together in a lineup, you'd be able to get Kyle Busch and Kozlowski easily. Um, and with those four drivers, that leaves you room probably to go with uh, um, either another value play down here with Bowman or Byron, jump up to Jones. You can have some really nice lineups this week with some of the nice values that are out there. Um, again, depending on what we see in final practice, so make sure to pay attention to that. And then Matt DiBenedetto, um, I think he's a nice pivot starting 24th. So not as much place differential value as some of these other guys that I talked about in the sub-7K range on DraftKings. But he started in 24th, showed top 20 speed in practice two. And if that continues through final practice, I think he makes a nice GPP play in that lower range as well. So as you can see, I've got five, five value plays here uh, in this bottom range, which is going to easily help you to build uh, if you want to make a core of Kyle Busch and Kozlowski and then mix in these value guys. Um, if you hit two or three of these value guys with Kozlowski and Kyle Busch, you're going to have a really good lineup this week. So that covers my core for this week. Like I said, make sure to check back on the cheat sheet, which you can find in multiple places. Twitter, you can find it on my new website. Go over to at Jaeger underscore bombs nine. You'll find the link to that website. You can find it in the Roto Pro Slack. You can find it in the DFSR chat room. Um, it will be updated after final practice this afternoon with my final targets listed on here. It'll be it'll be finalized, and then you can ask me questions on any of those other outlets as well. But thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. We've got more videos coming down the pipeline, and let's go get some green screens this week, everyone. Good luck.